Uh, hi, I'm Darren Tarantino. I'm a principal solution architect uh, with Red Hat. i um, going to talk a little bit about OpenID Connect using uh, Azure AD as the uh, authentication uh, backend. Um, had to do this for a customer in two different things. So, we've kind of talked about um, connecting it to OpenStack and then uh, also with OpenShift. So my uh, first thing is uh, um, one of the, my team members on my team always likes to start things off with Marvel Studio style, he says. So, um, so which is uh, a demo at first and then a demo and start with a demo and end with a demo. So the so first thing I'm going to do is uh, show. So I'm logging into uh, my OpenStack environment using OpenID Connect. So connect. Um, we're tied. I'm tied into. Uh, so actually, it's it's not prompting me for my login because I logged into Azure before, so it just has the uh, it's just cached. Um, I probably should have clicked log out. Um, so it prompts me through my uh, Red Hat login, um, and then redirects me back to uh, the Horizon dashboard, which uh, well, should hopefully should be told my environment crashed earlier today. So I restarted it. There you go. Look at that. Um, so I so I'm logged into uh, my own uh, project here on OpenStack using uh, using Azure AD. So the process that we just uh, that you just saw was uh, the OpenID Connect process. Um, basically, you wind up opening a browser and you navigate to your cloud, be it OpenStack or uh, OpenShift. Um, uh, the drop down showed OpenID Connect. Uh, so I selected that as my authentication mechanism. And when I did that, uh, it redirected me. It would typically redirect me to Azure AD and it would prompt me for a username, password, login. Um, and then there's two factor authentication, obviously. Um, there's a, a dialogue that would come up that says that you consent to passing permissions between the two, between Azure and your, uh, your cloud. Um, tokens are issued. And then uh, the your browser once again redirected back to the cloud, uh, validates the token, and then uh, takes you to the secure page of the of the browser. So um, this is the, the the workflow that we kind of work through here. So when uh, when we when in, when the when each of the points are talking to each other, um, when the private cloud is actually talking out to Azure. Um, it needs the connection details. It needs a client ID and a client secret to, so that it can it can authenticate that who's actually reaching out to it. Um, when the user connects connect the uh, Azure AD, you provide you provide your credentials and also your consent for the redirect permissions. Um, and then finally, uh, Azure uh, needs to know what the redirect URL is to go back to the uh, the cloud that you came from. Um, and then uh, it provides the access token. So the, the, those those are the key um, communication aspects that you need to be configured when you're actually configured OpenID Connect with either uh, with either OpenStack or OpenShift. So uh, when you go into Azure AD, what you do is you create uh, what's called an application registration. So the first thing you do is you'll go in, uh, you'll select at, uh, Azure Active Directory. And when you do add, there's enterprise applications and app registration. I'm not an Azure expert. Uh, I don't really know why what the difference is between an enterprise application in there or an app registration. I'm going to guess that it's some um, maybe service catalog type stuff. Um, I've not really used Azure other than to use the Active Directory aspect for it. Um, so when you go to register an application, uh, you give it a name, and then you can actually specify um, the different uh, people who are actually allowed to utilize what the, the registration you're doing. So when I created it, I just said it was single fan in, uh, use, use my uh, Active Directory um, configuration. Um, if you're a Red Hat employee and you actually do have a login to Azure portal using your Red Hat user ID, um, and you, you can actually do all this to test or demo for uh, users. Uh, finally, um, it needs to provide the redirect uh, URI. So what happens is uh, OpenStack, when it, re when it uh, reaches out to Azure and says, uh, when it redirects you to Azure to log in, it also provides what the, U what the URI is that it wants you to redirect to after, it after a successful login. Uh, so um, Azure ensures that that redirect matches the, uh, the initial uh, request that comes in 
uh, when you first log in. So then after that, um, you're going to need a couple of things. Uh, so you're going to need the client ID information, uh, which is that long string there. Uh, the tenant ID is actually part of a URL string you're going to need. Um, it's actually, if you look at the, uh, the endpoints, the, it, the tenant ID matches um, the URLs and the tenant endpoints. So you're going to need the endpoint for um, the last endpoint there, the, the metadata document. Um, so you're going to need that so that uh, your cloud knows where to redirect to. Um, and then you're going to have to do uh, client credentials. So you can go in the, into the client credentials. That's where you create your secret. If you're doing this, if you've never done this before in Azure AD, when you create the secret, copy the secret that time, because after that, you'll never be able to see it again. Um, you, you, it, it, it's hidden. It's, uh, uh, it's obscure. You can't see, but you can see the ID. You can you get a secret, and then you have an ID in that secret. The ID in the secret, you can always see. You can never see the secret again. So, so definitely copy the secret when you create it. And finally, you're going to click. Um, you're going to put in the redirect uh, URIs. So for OpenStack, um, there's actually when I configured this, uh, when I followed the upstream docs, um, the upstream docs uh, had me put in the uh, one URI there that I have uh, blocked off there. Um, it failed uh, when it redirected back to OpenStack. Uh, because Azure said that uh, it was missing this other URI, which I went back in and added, and then after that, everything started working. So, um, so on the OpenStack side, um, we uh, I did this deployment using Triple O. Uh, Triple O is, includes a template called uh, Enable Federation, and all of this information, as you can see um, within uh, within here, matches all of the items I pointed out, with a couple of exceptions. So the one thing you'll see there is this uh, IDC crypto passphrase, like the fourth or fifth line down. Um, that crypto pass passphrase is uh, an internal OpenStack thing. So when uh, OpenStack is actually communicating from node to node within within the infrastructure itself, it actually encrypts that traffic um, using that passphrase. Um, so uh, so the so that's for internal communication within OpenStack. Um, the other thing uh, to point out here is the uh, the open IDC IDP name Azure. Um, so that mapping uh, that needs to match your mapping uh, where you do your OIDP mapping so that you're mapping Azure to it as an open ID uh, endpoint. So before when you first go to arriving, you get the basic two. Uh, the two, the username and password login afterwards, like you saw, we have the little drop, out, drop down that says open ID connect. Um, you go through it, uh, click that. This is So this is uh, what it should look like if you're not already logged into Azure. Um, you'll get prompted to pick your account. You choose your account. Um, you did request permissions to be able to, uh, the app's able to see your basic profile and be able to send the information back to OpenStack. And then, no failure. So, um, so there's another part to this with OpenStack. So, what we did here is we created the identity provider um, as far as Keystone being able to go out. What's missing is the actual configuration data within OpenStack uh, that, that, that the, the IDP information within OpenStack for it to be able to map back to projects within OpenStack. So, you'll wind up with this 404, uh, could not find identity, identity provider Azure. So, in order to actually go through this, uh, what you have to do is you can create you can create a domain and associate that with this identity provider. So this way, anyone using Azure uh, AD would be able to log in and uh, utilize and log into this domain. Uh, second thing is you run an OpenStack identity provider create. Um, I variable all of these uh, items um, to, to basically match what was back in the uh, in the YAML file. So when you guys look at uh, so you got to look at this deck later. Uh, you can do that. You can figure out what, what's actually supposed to go in there. So basically, you broke you down all the steps on the left and then all the steps on the right. And after you do all of that, um, then uh, you'll be able to actually log into OpenStack and get the Horizon dashboard like we saw before. So that's OpenStack. So OpenShift. Uh, so with OpenStack um, Triple O, if you've ever deployed Triple O, it takes a little bit of time to deploy. That's uh, pulling it uh, lightly. Um, so instead of actually demoing, configuring that, 
Uh, I figured what we can do is actually configure OpenShift, uh, an OpenShift environment that does not have OpenID Connect right now, configure it and have it uh, update and authenticate, and then we'll be able to log in. So, sound good? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So log into OpenShift. Um, I don't know if many people here use OpenShift. Maybe some people have read how to have. Um, but anyway, so we log into OpenShift. We're going to go down here to uh, um, administration and go to the cluster settings. Um, we're going to go over to configuration. So what we're going to configure is the OAuth. So uh, so by uh, by default here, there's, so there's no identity providers listed. So we're going to go ahead and add. And we're going to select uh, Open ID Connect, and I'm going to name it Azure. So the client ID, yeah, uh, copy that. And then Secret. Yeah, when I was uh, doing this uh, doing this demo, I went back to get the uh, the client secret for this part and realized that I could no longer see it in Azure. So fortunately, it's in the triple chip templates. So, and then um, finally, we're going to put in the uh, the issuer um, URL. All right, so I've made the changes. So what we're waiting for here now is the uh, the authentication uh, of the operator to um, to rebuild, and it's and it's uh, uh, taking the new configuration. So once it's available again, we'll go back to the. Uh, so actually, while that's going, I'll switch back over and I'll, I'll just log out. So it can't be reached because right now the uh, cluster operator is uh, not available. So. Um, Couple things. Uh, so while this is going, uh, if you set this up in your enterprise environment and you are going to use Azure AD, uh, you need to realize that Azure AD doesn't exist on your own premises. So if you guys are connecting, if you guys have uh, um, proxies or anything like that for your corporate to be able to reach out, if those proxy servers go down, you just lost all your authentication to get back to any of your clouds. Um, I. I set this up at a customer and then um, it was as a proof of concept. So it was a lab and they had a single proxy server and someone kicked the power plug on it and uh, they weren't able to connect and they thought it was a problem with the product. But in reality, it was the proxy server that was down. So um, so you do need to keep uh, keep, uh, um, keep that in mind. So while we're waiting for this to uh, restart, uh, does anyone have any questions so far? Yes. To recommend for production deployments and express road as or something like that would be the safest way to do. Possibly. Well, I recently heard of another really good solution from the NASA guys. Because they they have they utilize it from um you guys utilize Kerberos, right? To tie into Azure AD. So you can do you can use your Kerberos login to be able to log in this way. If you lose that connectivity, it doesn't matter. So because you guys are using Azure AD, but you're tying that into a local well, we're not using Azure AD. Oh, you're not. We have oh. our own internal, so we're do, we're doing the Open ID Connect pieces. We played around with Kerberos back end. We set Kerberos as a as an off model for Keystone. Uh, okay. At one point, so we we can do we've done both. I see. Okay, so you're doing okay. I thought you guys were. I thought you guys were going through the 
through uh, another like a, a third party proxy for authentication using this. Okay. No, it's so yeah. So then yes. <laughs> NASA's internal active directory. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So our authentication cluster operator uh, says that it's available. So I will refresh this. And so now I have Kube Admin in Azure. Does anyone want to take a guess if this is going to work? It's not, and here's why. So if you remember, one of the things I mentioned earlier was that you have to populate the redirect URI. Otherwise, it will not go. It it, it will not send you back to the the cloud that you uh, that you were using in the first place. So we can easily fix this. So so when I did OpenStack, this is that's the same message that I got last time. Um, in regards to not, not having the proper URI and I have to go back and edit. So I'm logged here into uh, Azure. Um, this is the, the application registrations here, 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 and then we go uh, to the redirect, redirect. And if I come back to that um, page, options here. Copy the uh, SURI, edit, save, and I'll go here, refresh. It's a live demo. I think it's smoothly. Let me uh, try going back. Switch to slides. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no, we're going to try this more time here. There we go. So, so since I've already logged in, uh, it, it came up. So you can see that it's not really smoke and mirrors because there's my login right there, uh, DSARN, which is my uh, Red Hat login. So it, it just, I think it's just cached in the uh, in here that it's not not going to let me in. So I saw all I did was open another window and click login. So um, so yeah, so it actually worked. So um, and that's basically all I had. So. Um, any questions? So when we went through setting this up, for me, you know, all of the magic was in that mappings.json file. Did you have to futz around with that at all? Yes. Uh, because that was that was the super kind of like wow yeah. light bulb. Went actually, off. No, thanks for putting. I will. I actually am missing a, a slide in here. So yeah, so there is it. So um, the fourth, the third bullet down here is creating a map, uh, creating uh, a map, uh, creating the mapping.json file, um, which the uh, oh, I, uh, oh wait, here it is. Hold it. Is it maybe called rules.json? I think it, I'm pretty sure it was a. Uh, sure, it's, it's, it's mapping. Uh, I have it somewhere. I'll find it. I'll add it to the deck. But yeah, so the map, so the mapping JSON, the mapping JSON file, what it does is it it maps the uh, values that come back from uh, your authentication point uh, back to uh, 
variables within OpenStack for the user. Okay, so the user. Yeah. And the products. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's highly configurable um, for uh, for the purposes that I needed to do it for. It was just getting them uh, access to the environments and stuff. But yes, you can you can you can get pretty um, extensive with it and do um, different types of uh, like user mappings and stuff to say which which users get mapped to which projects and stuff. It's it's you can get really in the weeds. But yes, and. Uh, trying to get that right if you're doing uh, something uh, where you're trying to have multiple projects with multiple people and trying to get them in the right projects could get a little bit hairy. So, so what we do is we map them um, to a group membership in Active Directory, and then we map the group name to a role in OpenStack. So just being in the right group in AD entitles you to automatically have this role in this project. Okay, so, so pretty sweet. Yeah, because I know um, so if you if you're doing if you're just doing straight up uh, LDAP um, authentication using AD and you don't put your scoping properly, you will kill your AD server. We've had customers uh, basically because it does it'll 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 it it'll return more than a thousand. Look, it'll look through uh, everything if you, if you don't configure that properly. Okay. So. Uh, Anything else? You said you were starting to work on the CLI. Bit. Oh, yeah. So, so yes, thanks. So I, I mentioned that the other day. So the customer also asked if this is, is capable for the CLI. And yes, you can use the CLI's hold. You can use the CLI. And basically, uh, I have been working with the upstream documentation. And I got it to the point where if I enter and open that command, it pops up a window, brings me to Azure, I log in, authenticate comes back to the command and then tells me I'm not allowed to do what I was trying to do. So um, there's still there's still a step missing, but uh, I've been told by our engineering team that uh, it, they have it working and it does work, but uh, pretty much every developer has told me that at one point in their life. I'm just super curious when you get it working too, because I think you've got a step further than I have. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm close. Um, so and once I get it working, I will definitely. Do. Yeah, so that was our default call back at Kerberos. We look at them like we already have a, a Kerberos ticket on this laptop, so we can we can set that identity as well. And right. Doing that. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I'm just, you know, it's shoot me an email. Uh, I'm Darren at Red Hat. Okay. Com, so, and then uh, I'll make sure uh, I get back to you with uh, when I get the thing working. So, so one thing that's interesting about that is when you really dig into the debug logging on this. Ultimately, after the Open ID exchange is successful, all it comes down to is a Keystone token issue. Uh, and if you can snipe that token somehow and pull it back and set that as OS underscore token in right. your environment, then you're there. You have the working CLI. Right. I I I have to turn on to be like doing a TCP dumping red hat and then store that. There's got to be an easier way. So uh, when it comes to that, I'll see you in the script. <laughs>